I'm Father George Jean-Claude Muretiaimana. I'm the bishop elect of the Ecumenical uh, Orthodox Catholic Church here in Rwanda. I'm a married priest, have a wife and five children. I joined the Orthodox Church uh, in 2013, the end of that year, the end of 2013. After completing the seminary, uh, in the end of 2016, I came back to Rwanda. I served in the office of the Archbishop of the Orthodox Church, uh, the Diocese of Burundi and Rwanda. I was his personal secretary. Uh, so that time I was serving as a lay person or a catechist or what we call a reader. Myself, I started drinking at a very young age. As I can remember few things, at maybe four years old, yeah, I can remember some, something. The other, that, that time, we could drink a local beer, which we call Urguagua. It was available in, the, in our village uh, because we had a lot of bananas in the village and people could enjoy, uh, including children. When I was growing up, uh, I was drinking. But let me go when it was worsened. It was during, I mean, after, let me say, after the genocide against the Tutsi. You know, with the gen uh, during the genocide, I was able to flow up to Burundi. When we, we were coming back, we found a destroyed uh, family. I mean, I destroyed the, 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 the society, uh, a destroyed society of Rwanda. So, no one to, to blame. It was there, it was our life. So, I completed my primary school. But I remember when I was in the, even when I was even in the primary school, I could go to the bar with my fellow uh, children. After joining the high school, uh, I continued drinking not only the local alcohol, because with the, the, the school money, uh, I could also afford the, the beer in the beers. I don't need to mention the, their names, but you know those beers, I could to enjoy them. When I completed the high school, it's where I realized that alcohol is a burden to me. I used to say that it's my first enemy I have ever had. So, after completing the high school, I came to Kigali to find for survival, to find a job. And I found it. It was uh, in 2000, I think from 2002 to, 2000, to 2003. Yes, with my co-workers who were older than me, uh, we, we put ourselves in a bad situation where we could drink as much as we could. Then, with my reasoning capacity, I realized that alcohol is a problem to me. And if I don't change, I will not survive it. I will not survive it. I took like seven months alcohol free. After seven months, I remember that day, uh, it was during the burial service of uh, my friend's mother. So when we went to the funeral service, the, a lot of beer was there. I remember, uh, I told myself, with these, uh, you know, people were crying with, with a lot of sorrow. And I said, let me also enjoy one, one beer. I remember it was a bit sick, a big one. 
Then after taking it, I took even the second. After the second, the third one. I don't remember the, how many bottles I took that day. And I I I relapsed. I relapsed. It became very worse. I continued with that bad habit of drinking. Um, then I remember that is the time I realized that alcohol is now an issue. When I decided to join the church, even becoming a priest, there is a time I stopped drinking. But what I can tell you is that after a certain period of time, I resumed my drinking habit, yet a priest. And it was contrary to what I was told by the bishop. My bishop told me that as a priest, you are not supposed to drink. You need to be an example of your, of your people. You have to be an example of the society. So don't drink. Drinking is not for for priest. Yet I say, I thought to me inside, you know, that I can still take one responsibly. And there is, there is no responsibility in drinking, you know? Today, you drink responsibly, but, but you are not sure how it will come to, it will be tomorrow. Tomorrow, it may be they were very it, it may be very worse that's how alcohol is today it's okay you can drink one if you like but tomorrow you may drink 10 if i promise that i will not i will not drink and uh, you know they even ask you know uh, but i promised good enough in the church it's okay, you can fall down, but the problem is to remain down. Yeah? If you get that courage, you confess yourself, you decide to become a new creation. Yes, that's how it came. So, and I decided uh, to, to stop drinking because it's not for. Drinking, it's not necessary for the people. My wife as a partner tried her best to help me, uh, to accompany me in that journey, not telling me by force to stop drinking, but should to, should, she used to accompany me uh, gently. I remember uh, one day, told me, okay, it's okay, I can accompany you in the bar, uh, then you take one or two. You know what happened? When I went there, I found my fellow friends there, we enjoyed the beer at her presence. When it reached the time to go back home, I said, go back home alone. And I remained in the bar until the next morning. I realized this is now something that will ruin my life. Yeah, I still remember. So can you imagine a partner, how she felt? Before I joined the groups, I, uh, I had a chance to know uh, people in the anonymous groups who have been suffering, who had the same struggle as, as mine. So then after, when I decided to quit completely the alcohol on the 1st of September in 2020, 
to say bye to alcohol. It's where I joined fully the groups in a permanent way until today. So I started helping others, of course, for my own survival, but also joining the others. Um, we had, uh, we, we, we found a, a, an organization in 2017. But from that period, it did not function very well because I was still a victim of the alcohol. It was until 2020, we resumed the organization because it's where I started helping others. Yeah, my fellow uh, drunkards. Eh? Because I was a testimony. You know, uh, action speaks. Action speaks than words. There are people whom we were together, and when they realize that I'm changing positively, they decide themselves without any other help. From the observation, our organization, Iwachu Recovery Center, um, we offer uh, counseling services. We listen to the people. We also deal with different kinds of addictions, mainly alcoholism and narcotics. We listen to the people, we give them advice, we help them in a recovery process. With the occupation therapy, uh, we, have, we have med groups. We have youth groups. We have also uh, groups for adults. For the group, uh, the youth, we make an awareness. Awareness to tell our young people how alcohol and substance are a burden to their health. And that is awareness. Yeah, and the substance use. With the, um, with the um, youth groups or youth clubs, we make an awareness so that they know how alcohol and substance use are, is a burden to, the, to their health. So we also uh, make prevention, of course. If you make things aware, you are preventing them. And it, it is promising. We have different clubs. We reach, uh, we reach students in the schools, but also uh, young people outside of school. The adult people, they have what, it, what is Muchura uh, Uhoro clubs, which you have, you have it today. You have seen the people from Muchura Uhoro club here in Nyamata, in the Bujesera district. So those are Muchura Uhoro club. Because they are adult people, we use occupational therapy. Today, they have been farming, you see? They come together for farm. We have uh, um, uh, um, we, we, we farm like uh, vegetables. We have vegetables, green vegetables, and egg plants. Yeah? They are the one to, to find um, a farm. They prepare it, they prepare it with, the, of course, our, with the, our help, with our assistance. We have our volunteering agronomist. Yeah? I have to tell you that most of the people working in, in recovery, uh, in watch recovery here, we are volunteering. So people who want to help others, they join us with the uh, specialities. So we have agronomists who help us to show how our people can farm in a, in a modern way. 
yeah, you will see, you will see how people are now farming. We, they have also, uh, we have also other project like same projects, um, uh, you know, fashion, fashion, uh, uh, yes, uh, and um, they also save, save money. They have that, uh, uh, that way of saving money. You know? Yeah, and that uh, with their savings, they use money um, in a proper way, not in a drinking. Yeah? But they use money for uh, for other relevant things in their families. Yes. Simbuka mukarere ka Bugesera ndo mubyeyi abana batatu. Eh mugo buryo rero naje kugira ubuzima bubi buturutse kumwe biyo bya bwenge kandi mfite umuryango ndera. Mm muri 2017 nza guhura n'abavandimwe eh arivo iki kigo iwacu recovery center iwacu recovery center ni kigo nababyeye baziye igihe wavuga ko ari nk'intumwa z'Imana kandi zifite umumaro mu gihugu haba ku babyeye haba mu rubyiruko no kuvuga ngo ngewe nari umuntu mu buzima tiyaki utarabashaga kwiyakira ariko aho muri ye niki kigo cyabashije kumfasha ku nkansaringa ngira ibyo mbasha kureka birimo kuwitabe nubundi buzima bubi bgari bgarambashe bwo kwiheba eh aho rero maze kuguhura nabo baramfashije mu buzima nange mbasha kugufasha abandi uko nari maze gusobanukirwa cyangwa no kwimenya no kwikunda eh ari nabwo nifuza gutanga ubuhamya kugira ngo umunyarwanda wese ahari hose ntagaheranwe eh namateka aranga ubuzima bwe ahubwo eh ajya basha kuganira na bagenzi be atega matwi abamusanga kugira ngo nawe azagire umumaro muri iki gihugu